Hello my soccer universe and welcome to what happened in England over the past week. Boy, there was a lot, but I also have a lot to tell you before uh, we get into it. First off, you've seen my two videos on the situation in Ukraine and I have decided now to in every review video uh, for this week at least to include a Ukraine uh, jersey in my background. It will either hang here or here, wherever it fits better in, I thought, with the Wolves jersey, the Ukraine jersey will probably clash color-wise a little bit too much. So I'm hanging it here now. I, again, um, refer it to the two videos that I made on that situation. Uh, second of all, and this affects now all my videos for an unknown time going forward, um, I do have currently some software issues uh, so editing is a little bit uh, harder. I also am a little bit swamped with tasks uh, privately and professionally. So I decided for now uh, I will not include any graphics or tables or results within this video. And this will now be for the foreseeable future like that. I apologize for that. I'm not even sure uh, if and how I will be able to do a stats cast at this very moment. So uh, just as a heads up. Okay, let's get into it. We actually have to more or less talk about three competitions, uh, which is odd. Uh, yes, I did see a little bit of the League Cup final, although I decided to completely ignore this competition. But hey, that was a penalty shoot shootout. And not only because Liverpool won this very epic penalty shoot shootout, but also because of their overall performance, making it more or less a title race. And I'm sure if they would have uh, played on the weekend, although it would have been Arsenal on the schedule, I actually think they might as well have taken uh, the winner's spot overall but you know when you win a title and when you beat an opponent 6-0 i think that deserves to be worn um also we had not only um a very contentious win one would say of manchester city we also had decisive actions for the top uh, four race with probably Wolves being out of it at the moment. Um, and we had a very emotional comeback at Brentford and I would say the comeback of the season. And we in a way had also the sacking of the season. Bielsa is out of uh, Leeds. Despite no one at Leeds really wanting to have it, but given latest results, it was unavoidable. So plenty to talk about. We also have to go back to the midweek and we'll start with a few makeup games. Yes, the Premier League is finally making up stuff. <laughs> Um, Watford uh, losing 1-4 to Crystal Palace was what Star started off and then I think the first shock I mean uh, Spurs are just such a team where you just don't know where they're going how do you follow up a 3-2 win in Manchester City of course you lose 1-0 at Burnley just doesn't make any sense and Antonio Conte going in complete meltdown mo mode basically please fire me now I didn't know how bad this team is do your research before you take a job and back your team or um, just stay away from it. That's all I, I can say. Uh, the other thing that I can say now is that not only as an Austrian football fan, but also a LOSC fan, I find many similarities between the Austrian national team and LOSC and Spurs. To the point where I actually almost saying, yeah, Spurs might as well be my team in many ways. <laughs> Not quite yet. You know, I still don't have a really Premier League team, but I gotta say, uh, the way Spurs are performing, uh, it reminds me a whole lot about my own team. Up, down, up, down. Uh, and no, and rarely any trophies. Uh, the big result, though, was Liverpool completely dismantling leads and uh, what's even more that means of course that they uh, take a whole lot of control of the goal difference as well which now is already superior to Manchester City so meaning if you end up in a tie on top of the table you don't have that burden that you need to catch up uh, on on that and this was I think really important for uh, Liverpool uh, especially since Manchester City uh, also uh, destroyed Leeds now as for Leeds the problem is that were leaking way too many goals and will come to them for the second game as well uh, where I think 
Mas, uh, Bielsa tactics. Yes, it's all high intensive, but I think now uh, the Premier League uh, team got wise about it. And if you have great tacticians on the bench, uh, especially the man marking, will pluck away all the defensive weak spots like nothing else. And so, yeah, uh, it was ugly. Uh, and on, in addition, I think Mohamed Salah with two penalties became now the uh, African top scorer in the Premier League on top of that so yeah uh, absolute destruction um and yeah liverpool really really looking good uh, another team that looks surprisingly good now is arsenal yes they found themselves down uh, rather early on yes with a little bit of luck wolves makes it 2-0 and we're talking about a completely different game. However, Arsenal do come back. Uh, it takes, it is late, but Nicolas Pepe, and then uh, in the end, it was a Jose Sa own goal in stoppage time that give Arsenal a big win. This is now the second win against Wolves. And I would argue that puts Wolves out of top four contention, still in contention for European spots, but it will be a tough ask uh, for that one as well, given uh, who else is in the running there. So that more or less settled the uh, midweek fixtures and now we have to go uh, what happened on the weekend. It started on Friday with Southampton beating uh, Norwich 2-0. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Leeds against Spurs. Leeds again leaking many goals, Spurs uh, scoring four. Uh, Doherty, Kulusevski, uh, Kane uh, completely picking them uh, apart. And then late on uh, complete uh, the route, another route for Leeds. I think they have now given up a total of uh, over six, no, exactly 60 goals. That is not the type of defending that will keep you in the Premier League at the moment. And it's so, it is so sad that Bielsa had to be sacked because Leeds became an event. A total event. You wanted to watch Leeds. It was exciting to watch. You always got the uh, the good, good game. But as of late, those games were then rather one-sided. Last season, Leeds was real, real fun uh, to to watch. This season, he just couldn't get the curve. And uh, he Bielsa is a very dogmatic coach, and I was already for quite a while worried. I still am not one hundred percent sure that they are among the three worst teams in the league. I actually think barely not. However, uh, it doesn't look good and they are in real danger of getting relegated. So I think the sack, unfortunately, was unavoidable, even though Leeds fans have been claiming that, yeah, we would go down with uh, Bielsa too. <sighs> It's one of those. It's one of those. I literally think they didn't have a, a, another chance than doing it exactly as that. Um, but on the other side, Newcastle, uh, the big winners of the teams that have played in the Premier League, given their, their results, get another big win at Brentford, which more or less puts them out of relegation trouble, but also pulls Brentford back in. And But we saw at least one... A uh, big thing that Christian Eriksen came back onto uh, the playing field and is now, uh, <laughs> you know, after his uh, collapse at the Euros, he is playing again. And even the opponents uh, were clapping at the time when Newcastle was already 2 0 down. Brentford had, uh, after 10 minutes, a red card. Went that way. And I actually think that Brentford is the team that at the moment, uh, I would say, will join Norwich and uh, Watford going down. So all the three promoted teams uh, going down again. It's that as the way it's trying, trying moment, unless uh, something happens. But I feel, feel also that the manager for Brentford, uh, Thomas Frank, is in severe danger there. Uh, Brighton will uh, loses at home to Villa 2-0, Palace, Burnley 1-1, Burnley the overall the best team, no, of the ones that I have in Newcastle, but overall the best results were for Burnley. I mean beating Spurs is a big one, getting points at Creek Crystal Palace. Burnley is uh, getting themselves out of, out, out of trouble and if, we, and if you look at the standings what really um, amazes me with Burnley, yes they're still among the bottom three, but they only lost nine times. And they only won three times. So on one side, they have the least wins in the league, but also their losses should put them more mid-table. So it's all those draws that hamper, hamper them. So if they can convert a few of those draws into wins, I think Burnley looks rather, rather safe. And as I said, it's more between Brentford and Leeds. 
Uh, who, who is the third team to go down? I cannot say it differently. Um, to get even more uh, spice into that car conversation, and also um, a little bit uh, tilting things more Arsenal's way, is Manchester United at home to Watford 0-0. I mean, I saw the last half an hour. Uh, this was stale from United. Absolutely stale, absolutely horrendous. And for once, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is actually looking his age. He doesn't look good at this moment. So, yeah. Um, and big points for Watford, who have taken four from United. Will this be enough to uh, survive? Mm, maybe not, but we'll see. Now, I said contentious win for Manchester City. Um, maybe overall. First half, Everton gave, gave it all. In the second half, City were clearly the better team. They get a goal through Foden with slightly optional defending from Everton. However, the big talk is, I think it was a rotary handball in the box, where I think just by technicality, he gets away with VAR. I think when you see the replay, it's such a clear handball that there was not a penalty given for Everton. It is a little bit of a fluke, I gotta say. And then uh, we had West Ham in another big win beating Wolves uh, thanks to Suchek goal uh, early in the second half, 1-0. Um, yeah, Wolves losing twice in London this week and that will spell some trouble for them. As I said, Arsenal-Liverpool is scheduled for mid-March and we still have to see when Chelsea against Leicester will be played. Speaking of Liverpool and Chelsea, uh, they of course played in the League Cup final. Didn't see much of it. As I said, I usually ignore that competition. Uh, from what I hear, it was a great final, despite it being goalless. Um, so that's, I can say, with many goals scored that were all given for offside or some other uh, infractions. But I saw the penalty shootout. And I saw that Kepa had come on before, uh, which I think is smart. I really liked how uh, Tuchel, and I'm sure that Klopp did the same thing, kind of reminded their penalty shooters, if the referee whistles, this doesn't mean you have to take the penalty. Take a deep breath, take your time. And I think those two have kind of figured out the penalties. Because if you're calm and collect and shoot the penalty, it's really hard for the goalkeeper to get to it, even if the goalkeeper has, has a chance. And Kepa was a few times there, but so was Kelleher. Uh, who played. Now, I gotta say, I give Klopp a lot of credit. Um, while he did play a good squad, he used Keller in goal. I think I would have liked to have Tuchel play uh, Kepa all the way through, although Mendy probably, from all but he was potentially the man of the match. But they have figured out penalties. I think we will, see if this continues this trend of really listening to uh, the, um, the scientists and, and so on, I think we will see a lot more long penalty shoot shots coming, especially from really, really good teams. Um, to me, it was not a surprise after I saw this, this penalty that at this went, actually uh, every team member had to take a penalty. Uh, most notably, I think the psychological battle was there. Uh, Kepa was brought on to save the penalties. And then when Van Dijk takes his penalty, he is off the line and he says, I know you're shooting this corner, please give me the other one. And Van Dijk just yanks it more or less through him. At that point, I think uh, I had the feeling that um, Liverpool had the upper advantage psychologically because uh, Chelsea also had to catch a job and Liverpool was doing every penalty to near perfection. So yeah, that was, I think, only, only the one for Konate could have been saved. So uh, in that sense, that was in, in, interesting. Then Kepa miss, missing it, yeah, can happen. I think uh, I don't want to say that Tuchel did, 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 did wrong. If, they had, if this was the strategy, the strategy of one goalkeeper showed to be the better one in saving penalties, go for it. You only got to use every advantage. So talk already much more about the League Cup that... I want it. Uh, we actually have a couple of uh, games upcoming. I think we have a Burnley Leicester game midweek coming. Uh, then in um, midweek, we'll talk about that in a sec. We've also the FA Cup, but first let's, let's look what's on the weekend. Yes, there's a Manchester Derby coming. I also think that the Monday match between uh, Spurs and Everton is an in interesting one. And Liverpool against uh, West Ham. I think there are quite some interesting games 
on schedule. Uh, a little bit want to see how Leicester and Leeds will be doing. Uh, Jesse March will probably be on the bench in Leeds. And also uh, Burnley, Chelsea. For some reason, I have a feeling that Chelsea might trip up there. The way Burnley have been going. And then, uh, since we've talked a lot about the relegation, Norwich, Brentford. A uh, crucial match for Brentford. I must say. But as I said, we have an FA Cup uh, round coming up midweek um, with one game played on Monday because they want to show everything on TV. I have to say there's not the one, really one, that sticks out to me. I mean, Middlesbrough Spurs, uh, Eastern upset in there. I don't think that uh, City will f uh, fall to Peterborough. Um, Southampton West is a Premier League duel as is Liverpool Norwich. I'm interested to see if Liverpool will play their full strength squad after, uh, you know, are they, are they going for the triple? We must see. And Everton against Borum Wood is probably the most one sided tie in there. So, yeah, that's what it is for me from what happens in England. I would love to hear your opinion in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.